There's a new crop appearing in the heartland that may need a little water, but not much else. It grows without rows, crowds out weeds on its own, and doesn't need fertilizing or even replanting every year. The best part, it has the potential to turn a tidy profit. To most farmers, that sounds like magic. To researchers at a top heartland university, it's miscanthus. Uh, this is uh, miscanthus giganteus that was uh, planted uh, by small plants in, in 2002. University of Illinois researcher Tom Boyd is standing next to a test plot of miscanthus, an ornamental grass that scientists say may be a new plant source for creating ethanol. Long used in landscape design, miscanthus can grow more than 12 feet tall. It's been used on golf courses to divide fairways from driving ranges. It's been used in, land, in large landscapes because it can be quite dominant. I've always said that this is a great grass if you've got a neighbor you don't like. But there are lots of things that researchers here do like about miscanthus. Once planted, the thick stands of fast-growing grass spread quickly through root-like structures called rhizomes. We plant the rhizomes at about 42 to 4300 per acre. At that planting density, we can start to get a harvestable crop at the end of the third growing season. This joint research project between the U of I and the University of California, Berkeley, uses sophisticated equipment to monitor growth and field conditions. Researchers suggest miscanthus offers real options for energy alternatives. It produces large volumes of biomass is a, another reason why we are looking at this species. It's adapted to our part of the country, so it, it's a grass that, that fits into the scheme of things here in central Illinois. Illinois is one of the top corn crop producing states in the nation, a significant portion of which already goes into ethanol production. So why miscanthus instead of more acres in corn? Americans will consume nearly 400 million gallons of gasoline every day, so replacing even some of that with ethanol would be an important part of the picture. Now, scientists in Illinois say that an acre of corn will yield about 475 gallons of ethanol. An acre of miscanthus, nearly three times that amount. I think it looks pretty good. I, I'm, I'm yeah. impressed with how well this is doing. Yeah. Researchers Tom Voigt and Dr. Stephen Long spend yeah, a good deal of time in the test fields. They're assessing everything from moisture needs to photosynthesis and how cellulose in the plant's woody stalks can effectively be chemically converted to sugars to create ethanol, just like corn. You break that complex down to the sugars, then you ferment those to alcohol in the same way, of course, as we make beer. Once you've made this, this beer, you then distill off the alcohol, and that is the fuel. And of course, already in the Midwest, about 10% of our, our gas is, is ethanol from corn grains. Researchers say while corn can yield more than 160 bushels per acre for ethanol, miscanthus yields 17 tons of material. In addition, it requires less work from farmers. But for corn, you've got many more inputs. You've got a till the land every year, or at least you've got to plant your corn every year, you've got to add a large amount of nitrogen. With miscanthus, we've achieved this 17 tons per acre without any of those inputs. So the cost of the farmer in the long term is a great deal less. Dr. Long maintains that there are significant other benefits to grass alternatives like miscanthus. A lot of the motivation of grow growing a potential crop like this is to help to mitigate global change. So we're, we're growing a renewable fuel, but we also want to add carbon to the soil as well. If we get a carbon gain into the system, that is offsetting carbon we're adding to the atmosphere. Miscanthus has been grown as a fuel in many parts of Europe for more than a decade. But there, the woody stalks that look like bamboo are harvested, burned, and used to generate electricity. Doctors Voigt and Long say this research could reveal new options. My wife gives me a hard time because when I told her I wanted to study grass, she th thought that that was, that was going to be somewhat of a frivolous pursuit, and uh, it's come back now to, uh, to be a, a much more positive than either of us ever anticipated. So I think for 19 years people thought I was crazy, and now they're beginning to think, perhaps there's something in this. <laughs> so.